Hi everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about the layouts. So for this I'm going to create an empty game object and I have an image of course with the canvas, event system, I got a simple terrain, directional light and camera. But for this we just need the canvas and uh, the image and game object. On this empty game object I'm just going to put layouts and then I'm going to add a component, go down to layout and for layout I'm going to go to aspect ratio fitter. For this one, actually, just to show you a little better, I'm going to go to the actual image and go to layout aspect ratio fitter. Now, as you can see, there's uh, it's set to none, so I can't adjust this at all. But if I go to width controls height, I could adjust this and it controls as it suggests. It controls the, the height. So as you can see, it controls the height. And then uh, we have height controls width. So this one controls, of course, the width. We have uh, fit in parent, so it's going to fit in the canvas, which is, of course, the parent of the image. So it'll fit, you know, accordingly. And then um, there's also envelope parent. So envelope parent, it will just cover the whole image. Um, I never used this before, but I might start using this, testing this out, see how it works for pause menus. So I could just adjust this to black and, uh, you know, tint this. And then, you know, put my buttons, my resume button, my quit button. And, you know, maybe it will work for, you know, different. See, it looks like it's working for different. Um, how can I say it? For different resolutions. So this might be uh, good if you're trying to develop uh, on multiple consoles. Or if you're trying to develop for mobile, which, of course, there's different phone sizes. So this might be good for that. Uh, we're gonna move on though. We're gonna remove this remove and I'm just gonna set this back to white Actually, you know what? I'm gonna remove this image and I'm gonna put another image back in I don't know why my unities were acting up, but let's go to image. Okay, there you go Now we'll go back to layouts and then layout now. There's canvas. I talked about this canvas in a previous video same with the canvas scaler and I think there was one other one, uh, maybe the, uh, no, it was just canvas and canvas scaler. So in a previous video, I talked about this canvas and canvas scaler. So I'll leave a link up above if you want to check that out. We'll go to canvas group though. Now for canvas group, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a empty game object outside of the canvas. And then I'm going to add another canvas. So uh, where's canvas at? Another canvas. I'll just name this to another canvas so you can have like a pause menu and let's say like a the shop menu or something like that we could add this and we could add a canvas layout so we go to canvas group layout and then we drag both our canvases in now just to kind of show you how this works on this canvas I'm gonna add an image or I could add a button on this image I mean on this canvas and then uh, go to button I'll drag this down. So now we have a button on one canvas and uh, the image on the other canvas and we got this canvas layout. And now for alpha, if we adjust this, as you can see, we could change the alpha of both canvases and we can make either one interactable or not. So as you can see, my button is not interactable anymore. And then we could also block raycast so uh, we wouldn't be able to click it. And then we could also ignore parent groups. So any parent groups we could ignore. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the canvas group. Now let me undo all this stuff real quick. Okay. So yeah, that was it for the canvas group. And we'll go to canvas or content scalar fitter or size fitter. So as you can see, this is um, a size fitter. It it adds constraints. Let me show you better with this image. So constraint right here. Con content size fitter. So if you see up here where it has width and height, let me reduce these so you can see it better. If I change the horizontal fit to let's say minimum size, we can't change this width anymore. And uh, if we change it, let's say to preferred size, we can't you know, change the width unless it's unconstrained. Same with vertical, but instead with the height. So as you can see, we can't change the height. So we could have it um, where the content size stays the same depending on the width or the height. So I could have both these stay the same you know, no matter what content or what size this rate or the resolution is, the content will stay the same size. So 
So let me just remove this or let me undo it. Now I'll go back to the layout. And that was pretty much it for the content size fitter. It's just a way to uh, uh, restrain the width and the height. And then there's also grid layout group. So for grid layout group, I'll kick, uh, you know, click the component. And then just to show you better, I'll go to layouts. And then I'll drag the image inside the layouts. So the layouts will be the parent of the image. And the image will be the child. And now I could add, let's say, an image. And I could go to the layouts. And I could add spacing between these images. So as you can see, there's spacing. I could also... Um, change the size of them. So I could make them uh, bigger, smaller, whatever I want. This is uh, especially good. I use this a lot for when I'm making my games to make menus. So I could make, you know, have a, instead of these images, I could have buttons. And uh, these buttons, you know, I'll name one, you know, like a play button. I'll have that as the play button. I'll have this as menu, options, quit, shop, whatever buttons I want. And then I could just adjust these layouts however I want. I could adjust the size. So say I want the buttons to be this size. You know, I could have padding. The padding, I could adjust the padding. So wherever I want it to be. So let's say right there is kind of centered for me. And then, you know, if I want, let's say I want multiple buttons. Like I have two already, but I want extra buttons. All I have to do is either duplicate it or add a button in this layout group. So. If I push Control D, it duplicates it, and as you can see, I have three buttons now. And uh, I could also, you know, uh, duplicate like this, or I could copy and then uh, paste it. And now I have four buttons, as you can see. I'm going to delete this one, and then I could also pick up just the layout uh, game object, so I could adjust it like this if I don't want to mess with the paddings. So I could have zero on the paddings, and I could just adjust it like this. And then if we go to the game, as you can see, there's four now. And then also there's a star corner. If we wanted to start on the upper left or upper right, uh, lower left or lower right. Uh, same with the star axis if we wanted to be horizontal or vertically. So if we wanted to be vertically like that, um, let me adjust this real quick. So let me actually make the size smaller. And then we could add spacing and now it's vertically instead of uh, horizontally and then uh, we could you know change the child alignment so if we wanted to be upper center middle center um, lower center lower right whatever we want and then we could actually have columns or row counts so if we want to have let's say multiple columns or rows so let's say we could we want uh, three rows now when we add more images it will just keep on adding the rows for us same if we want, uh, I mean, these were columns, but if we want rows, same thing. And we could just, you know, add more rows or the count of rows. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the grid layout group. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to keep one of these images and uh, de and delete the rest. So I'll delete those and I'll keep this layout group. Now I'm going to delete this or remove it. And then I'm going to add another layout horizontal now horizontal is almost the same thing as a grid uh, layout group but the horizontal it only works horizontally so you can have a vertical and um, I don't think you can have yeah you can have um, columns or rows so now if we adjust the padding we could uh, also you know just the spacing have upper center upper or middle center we could reverse the alignment we could um, control the child size by the width or the height so now when we do the spacing, uh, it acts a little, you know, different. So as you can see, it acts, you know, completely different. We could, the same with the scale. We could have one scaled, one not, uh, whatever we want. Uh, child force expand, same thing. We could check um, the width and the height. So it will um, adjust accordingly to that. And then we have also the vertical one. Now the vertical one is the same thing. So if we go to layout, vertical. Same thing, but of course it's uh, vertically. And as you can see, you could do the same thing. You could adjust everything you want accordingly to how you want. Uh, and then uh, after that vertical layout group, we're gonna move on to vertical layout group, horizontal layout element is next. Now layout element, this just allows you to ignore a layout. So if you wanna ignore a layout, 
and then when we do ignore it we could set the priority of the layout we could also adjust our or yeah adjust the men width so if we want it to have a certain men width or men height we could have that we could have the preferred width or preferred height and the flexible width and height so this is also good for uh, mobile games if if you want to have a preferred uh, width and height if you want to have a minimum width and height you know a flexible width and height as well uh, this can help you uh, I've made two mobile games so far and I haven't had to use this but um, then again maybe that's why um, maybe they would perform a little better with this layout element but yeah uh, let me remove this and after that I think oh yeah and then we have this rec transform so the rec transform anything inside a canvas or any UI element so anything of these natures uh, anything of this nature except for the event system so this event system everything else will have a rec transform so as you can see they all have rec transforms now a rec transform is just like this transform uh, I think I mentioned it in a previous video but if not I'll go over it real quick this uh, let me go to the camera just so you guys can see it I'll go to the camera now this camera let me add a dot so you guys can see it a little better so you can see okay that's camera this is where my camera is now if I click on camera and I move the X it's gonna move it left and right if I move the Y it'll move it up and down and if I move the Z it will move it forward and back as you can see rotation I could rotate it so if I rotate it on the X it will go up and down so like looking uh, at the sky or looking at the floor Y will look like if you're looking right or left and then uh, let me show you in this scene so up and down left and right and this is like if you're spinning around like in a plane uh, hopefully you guys don't get sick off of this but yeah you just spin around like if you're in a plane or something and then scale for scale uh, I'll show you on the images scale it just if you scale it on the X it will make it bigger on the the width so it the left and right will get bigger so the width of it and then uh, on the Y the height will get bigger so up and down and then the Z it will be um, up and uh, it will be like forward and back so you wouldn't really be able to see it though so see how it's flat if you yeah if you increase this what it's supposed to do it's supposed to increase you know back this way or back this way and uh, yeah that's that for the scale and then the, the the position is just like the position in uh, the transform so X is left and right uh, position Y is up and down Z um, let me show you right here so as you can see it's forward and back if it says zero now the only difference from the rec transform and the transform is it has this width and height and this pivot so the width of course you could just the width or the height and then the pivot so let's say we want to rotate this image as you can see it's rotating in the center of the image where this little circle is now if I change the pivot let me show you real quick so if I change the pivot as you can see this little circle is moving now it's gonna rotate at this edge so like if I show you right now as you can see it's rotating right there where the circle is at instead of the middle so let me show you once again as you can see this if I put it to 0.5 where it's originally at it will spin right in the middle like if it's a billboard and someone's spinning the billboard or the sign but yeah that's pretty much it for the the layouts for for this layout group right here um, if you guys like this video please hit the like button if you guys uh, want to see more videos like this hit the subscribe button uh, it will really mean a lot to me it will help this channel grow and help a lot of people learn about unity and what uh, they could do with it uh, after this I'm thinking of you know uh, working on this mesh components I'm just gonna work my way down like I've mentioned in previous videos you know do all these miscellaneous stuff uh, physics physics 2d playables rendering scripts scripts these are all scripts that were imported so in, by default you won't have this tab until you create a script so we won't worry about scripts we're gonna uh, you know worry about the tile maps UI the FF, uh, the visual effects we really we're not really going to cover because unless you're doing HDRP you don't really need any of these later on though I might cover it, this when I'm actually creating a video game I may make a high definition video game 
a small video game just so you guys could see um, uh, what it takes to make one of those games. Uh, not only for us making the game, but for the computer. Uh, it is a little more intense on the computer, so it might slow down your computers from time to time. So we'll see how that works out for my computer, see if it could handle it while recording. And then uh, video, we've already covered the video on uh, a separate video, so I'm not going to cover this at all. I might just go through it real quick, but it's not really important. And then after I go through all that, we're going to create our scripts and we're going to start making our own games. So uh, subscribe if you want to see that in the future. Hopefully it's sometime soon. Hopefully, you know, in two, three months, we could start making our first scripts. But uh, once again, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification if you want to get notified as soon as the videos come up. And thank you once again.